Hi there. Welcome to Sunnyside Journals. I'm here with an episode of what's Catherine been up to? Because <laughs> I haven't done one in a while. I've actually done a few. Um, and then for whatever reason, they sort of got scrapped. Um, yeah, and a uh, different camera angle here. I thought I would let me get this out of the way. I thought I would show you where I keep some of my papers. Uh, this is uh, papers that I use frequently and here is my only stash <laughs> of scrapbook papers as I said I only get scrapbook papers from thrifted sources so someone else didn't want these and I snapped them up at my thrift stores um, so I have them sort of sorted uh, these are my these are my wallpaper books that I love and use. Let me get them out of the way. So this is, uh, I love reds, white, red and white and black and white. I use those a lot. And these are, so I've kept the, I've separated these from the others and I've got quite a bit. So they're very precious when I use them. Um, even still, I just, I love those. Now down here is the rest of my, um, scrapbook paper and I keep the patterned ones to the top and the solid colored ones to the bottom and that's basically it that's my organizing of my scrapbook papers um, and then up here is uh, tea dyed papers some I have more on the other side of the room these are my frequently used sizes so I keep those handy right there. Um, I just want to show you that because I'm actually, I've decided I'm going to use quite a bit of scrapbook paper in Betty. So I've got them tea dyed. I tea dyed them yesterday. And now I'm going to uh, fold and trim them. I like those two, so I got, that's rare that I have two of one sheet. Anyhow, so they're all tea dyed. They're going to go in Betty. So I'm going to pause for a second and get this set up over at my desk with my, um, with that thing, <laughs> the clamp, the tri my tripod and my clamp. So hold on a second and we will, uh, I'll see you back in a second. Okay. So we're back. This is the, this is the usual view. Uh, when I'm working at my desk now, I've got my, I didn't do very well with my tripod. So hopefully, hopefully I'm not going to bang into it with my chair. Uh, so yeah, I got quite a bit done on Betty off camera and I'm so happy with how she's turning out. I did some collaging on the cover uh, with some old laces, some old little snippets of some fabric here, some old buttons. I love this button. This is this is one of my saved things. I find some things that are just so precious. And I know that I'm going to someday find the perfect journal that it just has to go in. And this button had to go on Betty. And uh, I'm going to explain something probably silly. And you're probably all going to say, oh, Catherine, if we know that, who doesn't know that? But I'm going to take a chance that maybe somebody doesn't know it because I didn't always know it either. Uh, vintage buttons that have a beautiful pearl finish on it check the other side of it because sometimes those old vintage buttons really are truly made from a seashell and that that beautiful pearl finish is actually the interior of the seashell and uh, this button and i wish i'd shown it to you before i sewed it on is such a beautiful button but if you look at it closely you can see this is the other side of it this is the inside of the seashell. You can see all the grooves and crevices. Usually they're tiny little flat buttons. And if you flip them over, the other side kind of looks brown and crusty. That's actually the other side of the seashell. This one is bigger than I've usually seen. And it actually shows all the grooves and crevices of the seashell. And I just loved it. And I'd been saving it for a special occasion. And Betty is the special occasion. <laughs> She's getting uh, this beautiful seashell button that I like the wrong side of better than I like the front side. <laughs> so one of those quirky little things. Whereas this one, you can see this one is plastic that they've just made to look shimmery and pretty. So I thought I'd share that with you. 
hopefully I didn't bore the daylights out of you and maybe maybe there's one or two people that went wow I didn't know that because that's certainly what I did the first time I figured out hold on these buttons are actually made out of seashells so um yeah, so I did all the sewing around Betty that one day that I just really, really lost my mind in delight. <laughs> Absolute delight. I almost needed a martini and a cigarette after that. <laughs> and I don't smoke, but I do like a martini. Um, anyhow, so uh, off camera, I, I came up with a nice little collage. Uh, I wanted one on front and one on back and uh, some buttons. I thought Betty needed a few little things and then I made that little journal um, label uh, out of fabric and stitched around it and uh, yeah I, I'm very happy with how it all turned out. And then anyone who stitches on um, board knows. Now I've never sewed with my machine right through a cover but I've certainly sewed on um, on cardboard, cardstock, that sort of thing. And your needle will push through a, a certain amount of the cardstock just from displacement. Like if that's the paper from the side, the needle pushes through and you'll get almost like what's a, a volcano will do this. So you'll have all these bumps sticking up. And I have found for me, some people use their bone folder. Um, I have this uh, cocktail pick from my martinis. <laughs> Fortunately, I have six of them. So one of them got donated to the cause and is always on my desk up here. And I love this metal smooth round end to it. And previously to that, I had been using the end of one of my awls. I've been using this. Um, but I like this better, this metal. I just find it's a little bit firmer. And I just went all around the edges and just in little circular motions and just pushed all the... I mean, this is done now. If you're seeing shadows, it's because just because of the thread um, texture. These are all done. They're all flat. And uh, so then it, you lose that bumpiness. You'll also get that if sometimes if I'm putting brads through a cover and I'll use an awl to poke a hole through the cover to put the brad through, you'll get the same thing. You'll get the little cardboard volcano, I call it. And just you just got to use your um, whatever it is you're going to use. But for me, it's this little thing. It's just terrific. But certainly prior to discovering this one, the back of my awl worked great. I just found that when I used my bone folder, uh, sometimes because I would be a little too vigorous, which I can be, um, I would leave, you You could see the line marks of the bone folder, like you could see the, the edge. Um, so I just find that circular motions with my circle shaped instruments gets those little bumps gone. But you can see where I, I went back and I used the sewing machine and uh, I gave a little extra stitching to the uh, collage that I made. First, I sewed the collage together by hand, and then I minimally used some glue to tack it down in strategic places on both. And, uh, and then I used the sewing machine. Um, I had to be careful with it because my foot, I wanted to try and get close, but these buttons made it hard for me to get my foot close to it. Or be, the foot... You know what I mean. Anyhow, I got the job done. That's what I need to say. And then uh, I just felt like I wanted this this journal uh, to stand out a bit more. So I found some some old ribbon that my crafty crash sent me at some point. And so I just wove it in and out. I used um, a darning needle. Darn, I can't find it now. <laughs> Get it? Doesn't matter. I used, oh, here it is. I just used a darning that has the great big, huge flat hole. And I just put the ribbon through it. And then I, and then I wove it in and out and around and made a little, made a little, uh, sort of a focal point, I guess. So I love how Betty's cover turned out. Now I did get her, uh, 
end papers ready. Now, do I know where the end papers are? Hmm. I may have to pause and find them because I'm quite sure I put them aside and now I don't know where I put them aside. Hold on. Okay, I found them. So these, I believe, are going to be the end papers. Never say never with me, right? I've been known to change my mind right at the very last minute. But I do love the way these feel. I like the colors. I like the yellows and greens. They feel very spring. And um, I like that it's sort of got a garden. Like these little bumblebees here. And there's potting and watering cans. And sort of little garden things going on there. And uh, because Betty's at the farm, at Bramble Farm, I thought that that was, I thought that was nice. This is vintage or old. I don't know. I don't know if it's vintage. I found it at thrift stores. I think it's just old, but not yet vintage. Wrapping paper. So I did my usual thing when you when I deal with really thin paper, the way wrapping paper is. Uh, I used my um, aerosol adhesive and put it onto um, just light cardstock. And uh, I, I do that too, because if you're like me, at one point you've you've glued in your end papers upside down. So I just do the front. Uh, so yeah, now she's not glued in yet. I'm still toying with where I want to put her. I fussy cut her out of an old uh, reprint of a I think it's 1908 Sears Roebuck catalog that I have. Um, I found it at my at my Kirby book sale. These things you can buy them on Amazon. I was just lucky because I got this one. Look at this! Isn't this awesome? It's a it's a reprint of an entire Sears Roebuck catalog. Uh, I got this one for a dollar, but I you can get them on Amazon. They they sell them. They sell all kinds of different years, and well worth it to get uh anyhow so i fussy cut her out and i rather like her there and then i still have the um the pricing and the description of that dress and then that's the back view of it so i'm thinking i might make a little tag like that so that that can go in the front this pocket i made from a doily I backed it with cardstock so that it's a little bit stronger and then I sewed around the edge. So I'm liking, I'm so far I'm liking how uh, Betty is, is looking. I think, uh, I think she's going to be very pretty. Now I'm going to move this out of the way. So I, you know what, I have some silly little work to do today and uh, hence back to my scrapbook paper. Um, I have decided to um, to donate four sheets to the cause. So um, there's going to be five uh, signatures in Betty. She's so, she's only got a one inch spine, but uh, I like uneven numbers of signatures. So I, instead of putting four in, because usually you would put one signature per quarter inch, um, I am going to put five smaller signatures in. And she'll lay lovely then. She'll, she'll uh, look very, very lovely. And then I also did this yesterday. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw a photo. I um, created uh, tabs from the chapters, from the first five chapters. And I'm going to put those on the um the first page of the five signatures so it'll be chapter one and two and you you get the idea so these will be going down the side so that means i have to be choosy about my laces because i want to be able to see these and i may very well decide that instead of getting laces on the side betty's going to have maybe lace tabs on the top and maybe some trailing lace at the bottom that could be it because I really love the look of that. I think it turned out uh, very nice. In chapter one, you can still see the title. So it was actually like that. And I love when that happens. I think that looks really cool. 
so the new owner will be able to tell that these were actually were the chapter headings um, for Betty. I still need to decide what I'm going to do with her with her first page and I'm also going to do something with the table of contents but I'm not sure how much more of the text block I'm going to use. Maybe I'll use some for backgrounds. It's just really extremely poor quality paper. It's just mushy and even working with it to try and make those page tabs was um, was quite challenging. I had to be very, very careful with it. It's just mushy and it doesn't even rip. It just sort of pulls apart. <laughs> so poor Betty. She's she wasn't aging well, but she's going to feel much better when I'm done with her. So I want to um, I want to make four uh, four signature like the front of the signature. I like I usually like using something a little more significant for the outside leaf of the signature, and uh, so I've only I'm going to use these four. Uh, and one of them is going to be um, a spread from Edith Holden, and I haven't picked that out yet. So, and I've learned from the past. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm, I've learned from the past, and again, I'm sorry if I'm being repetitive to anyone who already knows this. I, I worry that you grow weary sometimes. Um, but... Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, I'm, I'm always wondering, you know, who's new? Because well, we all had to learn. And we, this junk journal, um, this craving to make junk journals that we have starts somewhere. And we all start watching videos at some point. So you just don't know who's watching today who might find it interesting and good to know that... Don't fold your papers first before you tea dye them because they will stretch and become misshapen. So tea dye them first and then do your folding and then do your cutting. So I need, hold on, I want to use a regular spread. This is my template and I've already trimmed it down a little bit because I don't like my pages to be as wide as the, as the original pages in the book work but in this case with the front I actually do want it to be the same size so I want one of these let's see if it'll come out without too much uh, trouble ah, good thank you for cooperating Betty I want you and then let's see I'm I'm going to want to trim so I'm going to leave myself a bit of edge and I know that it's kind of sad to lose that the tea dyeing darkens that edge a little bit and it really looks yummy, uh, but it can also be uneven. So I just, I do this. I get it ready. I, I learned this from someone. I have a hard time finding my beginning and end when I am scoring. So I just took a, perm a thin permanent black marker and darkened just one of them. I happen to choose three. You can choose whichever one you want. And that way I know I know better where I'm, where I'm scoring. So I just always go to three. And that way, as long as I've got it flush against here, I know I'm going to get a 90 degree. And I have something to aim for down here because I am notorious for running my... Um, this little thing right out of the groove and then I make a mess so sometimes I will even um, lay a ruler beside it so I know how to carefully uh, keep going all right there we go so I do that I want to be able to save as much as possible I'm not going to if this was a bigger book I would make one of those pockets, you know, how you can fold them and automatically create a pocket. I would do that. This isn't a very big book. I want to be very, very uh, careful with how I bulk Betty up. Betty's watching her figure. 
There we go. So that's good. And that way I can still use this side. And that way, where's my other cutting board? Because I like this one better for cutting. Um, and that way, these two edges will match up now when I cut. Um, Because your fold, you know, is even and not, um, and not wavy from being stretched. I hope most of this, I can't fit it all in the camera angle. So I'm going to take that off. That can still be used. And then we're going to put this in again. I know that there, I, I could probably use a ruler and make this easier for me, but this is what I do. Everyone gets into their own little groove. You'll find yours, or you already have yours, to the experienced journalers, and I bow to you. <laughs> I've learned so much from so many of you. All right, here we go. So that's, that's there. Good. And there we go. So now I know it's the correct size. Now, this is just me, but because I lost that lovely tea dyed edge, I had to trim it off. I will, um, I will just kiss the edge of this new raw edge. There's the white inside, the core of the scrapbook paper. And I will just go down and darken that again because that is fresh white in there and I don't like it <laughs> it's just me but I will just go along and just give it a little bit of a little bit just to darken notice I'm not necessarily inking it this way I'm not inking the the front I'm just getting that white core and darkening it up and it just makes a difference to anyone who's looking at it closely, holding it in their hand and taking a look. It makes a difference. Now, let's take a peek. Hold on. This isn't necessarily chapter one, but let's take a peek and see how this is going to look. Oh, I'll give you another uh, reason why. And sorry, but this is the homeschooling mom in me. I explain everything as I go along because I homeschooled five children. Um, right up until they went into, some went to high school, some didn't, and but they all went on to college and university, and they did great. Yay! I didn't ruin them. <laughs> um, anyhow, I'll tell you why I wanted to use the full size rather than my trimmed size as well. I have found, when you think about it, the mathematics of the situation... Pretend these are all my papers that I'm putting in for my signature that I'm planning. Eventually what happens, simply because of bulk and math, the interior papers start getting longer than the exterior papers. So I, and I don't necessarily worry about that. I like the charm of an uneven edge, but I don't want it too uneven. And especially for the first page of the signature, I like to make sure it's long enough that the presentation is nice. Um, interior, I don't really care because that, that part can also be the charm of it, having staggered and variated, uh, varied page sizes. But the fronts of the signatures, I really like them to be the standard size of what I want the book to be. So I just find that by... Um, Cutting this the full size of the page spread, it gives me more time because uh, I can always trim a bit more off later. Ah, there goes my alarm. Well, I'm out of time because otherwise my phone's going to cut me off. Let me turn this off here. So thanks for visiting with me. Um, we did a little bit of catching up. I have been 
as you can see, I've been busy up to things. I was actually going to share a few more things. I may very well do another, um, do another little 30 minutes later on this afternoon, but I'm, I get to do some FaceTime with my mom in about 20 minutes. So I'm very excited about that. She's doing great for anyone who's wondering, mom's doing great. Uh, the angels that are working so hard in her nursing home are keeping them safe and healthy and they've had really good success with their medical skills. Oh, my hat's off to them. I'm going to try and come up with a way to, to express my thanks in a, in a better way to them when this is all said and done. Anyhow, so she's doing great. Uh, I'm going to have a little bit of face time, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. That'll be exciting. And uh, yeah, so take care. Have a great day. Hope everyone's safe and hope you're healthy and doing well. Goodbye.